it's very easy to create a morph animation in SVJater. Let me show you how. I will start with this circle, which is an ellipse element. In order to change its shape, I first need to convert it into a path element. So right-click and choose Convert to Path. To create the morph animation, I need to edit the path's nodes. To access its nodes, go to the Tools menu and select the Node tool, or simply press A on the keyboard. To have more precision while moving the nodes, make sure you have the snapping options on and the Snap to Grid enabled. I want the animation to start with a delay of 4 milliseconds, so I'll drag the playhead at 0.4, then go to the Animators list and choose Morph. The first keyframe marking the first state of the path is added, and now I have to drag the playhead at one second, where another keyframe will mark the next state of the path. Now, all I have to do is to play with the nodes and change the path's shape. I want to transform this circle into a location pin symbol, so I'll select these three nodes and move them up one grid unit. Then I'll move the bottom node one grid unit down. Of course, I need this to be pointy and sharp instead of curved. For that, I'll simply change the node type from here, where I'm choosing the first node type, straight. Next, I want to adjust the side nodes a little to make the shape smoother. First, I'll select them both and make sure they have the same node type, which will be mirrored. I'm now adjusting the Bezier's to have a smoother curve. It's important to keep it symmetrical, so I make sure to edit it the same way on both sides. Done. So now we have the first morphing transition between a circle and a location pin symbol. To make the location pin complete, I'll add a circle on it real quick, and then continue with the morphing animation. With the playhead at 0.8, I'll choose the ellipse tool from the menu, turn off the snapping option, and then draw a circle right here. I'll use the color picker to pick the white from the canvas, and then align its center with the symbol. Now, from the animators list, I'll select scale, and in the scale inputs, I'll type zero. Then drag the playhead at 1.2 seconds and set the scale back to one. And maybe I can place the circle better. There. Let's continue with the morph animation on the path. This time, I also want to combine it with a rotate animation that will be in sync with the morphing to achieve a more dynamic effect. I'll start the rotate animation from here at second two. Now, choose rotate from the animators list. Drag the playhead three milliseconds. Then grab the bounding box from this little circle in the corner and rotate it 180 degrees. Hold down the shift key to have it snap at exact 180 degrees. I will also hide the circle for now so I can focus better on the path. Just go to the elements list and click on the eye icon to hide it. Now drag the playhead at the two second mark and add another keyframe on the morph animator by clicking the add keyframe button here. Then drag the playhead to match with the rotate animation at 2.3 seconds. I'll select the node tool again by pressing A on the keyboard and start reshaping the path. I'll also turn back on the snapping option and start with this node which I'll move down a little. Then I'll move up the right node and also the left one, maintaining the symmetry. Now back on the previous node, which I'll need to move down some more. Also on the right one to the right, and mirror the action for the left one. I'm trying to achieve a nice shape of a heart, so I'll take the time to do it as best as I can, adjusting and tweaking every node and bezier. The more you polish the shape, the better the result will be. I'll speed up the process on this part just to save you some time, and resume once the final shape is ready. And it's done. Let's see how the morphing animation looks like. There is the circle morphing into a location pin, which finally transforms into a heart. I would like to end this animation with a heartbeat effect. I'll drag the playhead three milliseconds and add another morph keyframe from where the heartbeat should start. Then another two milliseconds, where I'm going to reshape the heart. I'll first turn off the snapping and then move the nodes using the arrow keys. I just want to slightly make it bigger by carefully moving its nodes and adjust the Bezier's for the node on top. Now let's take a quick look at it. 
I think I can make the heart even bigger for a more intense effect. So I'll adjust the node some more. Done. It looks better now. Now to complete the heartbeat, I have to duplicate the previous keyframe at the end, keeping the same timing of two milliseconds. And there you go, a nice and smooth heartbeat effect made with the morph animator. That's it. Now I only have to wrap up the whole animation and complete the circle animation as well, then add some easing effects. I'll make it visible again, and I want it to scale back to zero and vanish right where the location pin starts transforming into the heart, right here at the two seconds mark. Next, I'm selecting both scale keyframes and press Control or Command D on the keyboard to duplicate them starting from the playhead's position. The keyframes I just copied have a scale transition from zero to one, but in order to make the circle scale down, I need them to be from one to zero. So I'll right click and choose reverse keyframes. I just want it to scale down a little faster, so I'll reduce the distance between the keyframes and also drag both of them one millisecond to the left to start the scaling sooner. I'll also tweak the timing for the beginning of the animation and speed it up a little by dragging the first keyframes closer to the second ones. Finally, I will add an easing effect for this first transition of the circle. For that, I'll keep the first keyframe selected and open the easing panel. I'll choose a random preset which I'm going to customize by adjusting its curve. I'm looking for a bounce back effect. For that, I'll drag this handle out of the panel and have the curve going outside the box. You can see how the circle bounces back a little, making the animation more compelling. I'll actually use the same easing effect for the morphing as well. I'll just have to select the first morph keyframe and pick the custom easing which was saved here in the presets list. I'm also going to set an easing for the heartbeat part. This time I'll use a preset, which will be ease in out quad. And we're done. This is how you can create morph animations fine-tuned with easing effects in SVJator.